Hello, MCU fans. Today's video is a special one. A cow, a longtime viewer, reached out to me recently and asked if I would do a special request for him. Now, as we talked, I learned that he's going through some very serious health issues right now with, honestly, a pretty bleak prognosis. So if you have any positive thoughts or prayers you'd like to send Cal's way, I'm sure it would mean a lot to him. So he asked me would I do a video on the MCU-themed amusement park rides as well as the Disney Cruise Line. And it was a great idea. I had never looked into this before, but it's really cool to see how Marvel has connected several of these storylines together. And of course, in an It's All Connected MCU, you never know if down the road, some of these storylines, which obviously are not 616 canon, but could be multiverse stories, maybe they'll even be Easter eggs that end up showing up in Secret Wars in the years to come. But even if not, it's really cool as an MCU fan just to learn about all the detail and effort Marvel put into these rides. And in fact, if you want to learn more, in the comments, I did a pinned comment that has several links to videos with full PO views of the ride. So you can see all the visuals, learn all the dialogues, a lot of fun. So Cal, this one's for you. I really hope you enjoy it. Let's dive right in and see what we can find out. All right, so first we're going to look at the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, which opened on May 27th of 2017 and is located at the Avengers Campus in Disneyland, California. It's named the Tavon Collection because it brags that it now displays the Guardians of the Galaxy. So the collector has basically purchased and replaced the 13-story building that used to hold the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. The lobby way includes an awesome portrait of the collector and his brother Grandmaster playing a game of chance. And darn it, Marvel, you got to get these guys together in a movie. Please, please make it happen. So the visitors to the collection learn that they are VIP guests who've been invited to view the exhibits. And these exhibits include Dark Elf artifacts, a Nova Corps uniform, an Asgardian Royal Guards uniform, and poor Cosmo. Cosmo always seems to get caught in the collector's cages. Well, the collector then appears on screen and he shows off his latest acquisitions, the Guardians of the Galaxy, each in customized display cases. And it's revealed through their banter that the Guardians, specifically Peter Quill, were tricked into coming to visit as they thought they too were going to be given a tour of the facility. The collector now, though, has them in glass cages that are electrified so they can't escape. So the guests are then led into the collector's office where another video of himself begins playing when suddenly Rocket, who has now escaped from his cage, enters the room through a vent, hijacks the video, and explains his plan for rescuing his friends. He needs the guests, who have been granted security clearance to gain access to the inner sanctum of the fortress, enter a gantry lift while Rocket rides on top, and he will blow up the generator so the Guardians, as well as other creatures in the collection, can escape. And the Guardians will then reunite with Mantis, who will arrive in their ship so they can make a quick getaway. And on his way out of the collector's office, Rocket grabs Quill's Walkman, which may come in handy. So, the guests then board the gantry lift that Rocket talked about, where they're going to now try to help Rocket free the other Guardians. And as uh, after the guests have seated in the gantry, the collector tells the riders, this is the moment you've been waiting for. However, Rocket ruins his moment by unplugging the system, inserts Quill's Walkman, which is now queued up to one of six classic rock songs. The lift then quickly goes up to the generator room, where Rocket promptly blows it up, opening the cages, freeing the team, but also cutting the power to the gantry lift. Now, Rocket tries to regain power as the lift goes up and down, and guests suddenly see the Guardians entangled in various situations. We see Drax in battle with one of the freed creatures from the Collector. Uh, we see Star-Lord and Gamora also locked in battle with Baby Groot just pretty much standing by. Come on, man. Help him out, Groot. Help him out. And even after being freed from the creature, Star-Lord then has more trouble coming his way as lots of the drones and guards for the Collector uh, head off after him. And then, at one point, the gantry even stops at the top of the tower and the doors open to the outside as Rocket says, Hey, is that Disneyland? That's thematically incorrect. Rocket then finally restores power, and the lift drops down to show the Guardians now reunited with Mantis and Cosmo the Space Dog. Quill and Gamora thank the guests for their help, but as the lift resets itself, Drax is heard asking, why are we thanking them? As all the guests did was sit through the whole ordeal, and they did not actually do any fighting. 
<laughs> As the guests exit down the corridor, the collector can be heard over the intercom, upset over the loss of the guardians and his creatures. Howard the Duck, of course Howard the Duck, right, can also be occasionally heard mocking the collector's misfortune and bidding the guests farewell. Okay, next we're going to view Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure which opened on June 4th of 2022. It is also located in Avengers Campus at Disneyland California, along with the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout that we looked at earlier, and also an Ant-Man-inspired PIM test kitchen, which will come into play as we move along. Now, guests visit Web, or Worldwide Engineering Brigade, where Peter Parker is demonstrating his new battle companions called Spider-Bots. So the guests enter the main headquarters of Web. And it's a program funded by Tony Stark to bring the world's youngest engineers together to build innovative technology for the future. And we meet several of those engineers, Harley Keener, Anome, Dorian Green, and Lunella Lafayette. Well, and of course, Peter Parker himself. Next, we pass through the locker room. And one can't help but notice the references to some popular friends of Peter's, including Gwen, Mary Jane, and Miles Morales. Next, guests are then guided into the lab by the artificial intelligence Sharon, who introduces them to one of the web lead engineers, Peter Parker. Parker explains that the guests will be testing out the new web slinger vehicles that allow them to shoot webs just like Spider-Man. But as he's explaining this, one of the program's newest inventions, a robotic helper called the Spider-Bot, malfunctions and begins endlessly replicating itself. And they begin tearing down the facility. If they're not stopped, they could destroy the rest of the Avengers campus and pose a threat to the planet. Peter insists that Sharon does not need to contact Tony for help. Sharon instead contacts Spider-Man. <laughs> Instantly, Peter receives a notification on his phone, leaves the room to find Spider-Man, and soon returns in his Spider-Man outfit. Sharon again offers to contact the Avengers, but Spider-Man instead recruits the guests to help. He and Sharon instruct the guests that they will use web slinger vehicles so they can team up to stop the self-replicating spider bots. After the guests enter the vehicle, Spider-Man opens the door to the web prototype garage and instructs them to web up and capture the loose spider bots as he seals off the exits. And if the guests have good enough aim, plus don't mind looking a little silly in the process, <laughs> they are actually able to help destroy the bots with their virtual web shooters. So, the spider bots then enter through the tunnels and into the PIM test kitchen that we mentioned earlier, which, of course, you can tell because of the giant pretzel being worked on. Now, one of the spider bots becomes giant after being exposed to the PIM particles, but Spider Man manages to tie it up with his web and kick it into an area testing alien technology. Then, Spider Man and the guests enter into the collector's Tavon collection. And I apologize, the only photos I could find for this were in 3D. But it's important because this is a tie to the Guardians of the Galaxy attraction we just looked at. So they're basically over now in the collector's lair. Unfortunately, um, while battling the spider bots, Spider-Man is actually captured and placed in one of the collector's display cases. But he manages just to escape with the help of the guests. Okay, no more 3D photos. <laughs> Approaching the hangar area, the spider bots attempt to hijack one of the Quinjets. After defeating them, Sharon explains that the giant spider bot actually survived and is now glowing green. Now, Spider Man noticed that the green bots explode when they're hit, and he believes they could trigger a chain reaction if they focus on them. Spider Man corners the giant green uh, spider bot back in the hangar and causes it to explode with, of course, the help of the guests, which destroys the rest of the spider bots in the process. Spider-Man thanks the guests for help, and then, as the vehicles approach the unload area, and we can survey all of the mayhem, Spider-Man and Sharon both agree that they should inform Mr. Stark of what has occurred. Okay, so next is the Iron Man Experience, which opened on January 11th of 2017 in Tomorrowland at Hong Kong Disneyland. Now, this attraction is a 3D motion simulator set at Stark Expo. The guests will be treated to a history of Stark Enterprises as they travel through the exhibit. Also, included are replications of Mr. Stark's most famous Iron Man suits, 
as well as a beautiful model showing off Stark Tower, which is located in Hong Kong. There are also several of Stark Enterprise's many technologically advanced vehicles, including the ship that the guests will ultimately ride in. In fact, once they have boarded the ship, the trip begins, as Jarvis flies them out of the park, navigates them through the area, and then eventually takes guests to get an up-close encounter with Stark Tower in Hong Kong. However, Jarvis gets alerted that Hydra is using giant robots to try to steal the arc reactor on top of Stark Tower. Jarvis calls Stark and tells him the news. Meanwhile, giant robots attack the ship, even breaking into the protective window with their giant metal claws and putting the guests in jeopardy. But Iron Man arrives on the scene and attacks the Hydra robots so that the guests can begin to safely escape back to the expo. However, a giant Hydra octopus breaks through the street from below and heads off to steal the arc reactor. Jarvis calls upon more Stark pods, and they all proceed inside to take it down from there. And that's when we see that Arnim Zola is in control, with Hydra bots trying to defend the octopus from being blown up. A giant core activates its arm and attempts to attack, but the pods are ready to fire. Stark finds a weakness and blows it up, and then Stark and the pods escape to watch the blast as the octopus explodes in dramatic fashion. Now, Stark then congratulates the guests for being heroes, but the power on the guest vehicle begins to fail. So, Jarvis grapples onto Stark, who then flies them back to Disneyland and to the expo. He finally thanks the guests, but before he can do anything else, Dummy shows up and gets himself in even more trouble. All right, the next one is Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle. It opened on March 31st of 2019, and it is also at the Hong Kong Disneyland. Now, guests enter the newly opened Shield and Science Technology Pavilion at Stark Expo, where they will discover technological innovations showcased by Shield. In the lobby, the guests learn, through screens featuring Leslie Lamb, Ant-Man, the Wasp, and Iron Man, that the pavilion is under attack by... Arnim Zola and his army of swarm bots. You might remember Arnim Zola, of course, was attacking in the previous uh, ride that we looked at. And of course, Iron Man is too busy to assist as he has his own issues to take care of at Stark Tower, as we saw. So Zola's goal is to steal the data core, precious data stored by S.H.I.E.L.D. in the pavilion. Now, Scott is a bit worried about some of the guests, but he decides to ask them to help participate in the fight along with he and the Wasp. So it is suggested that the guests get into the Dagger's vehicle, pick up their EMP blasters, and they will use those to hopefully destroy the swarm bots. So the guests indeed board their vehicles, and along the way, they're guided by Ant-Man and the Wasp on monitors. Now, they use those EMP blasters to shoot the targets and hopefully destroy the swarm bots. And in fact, Ant-Man and the Wasp help them all the way throughout the battle, appearing here and there, telling them what to do, and telling them what to watch out for. Then, in the middle of the ride, the guests are actually shrunk down by the superheroes in order to destroy the bots from the inside. And that's where they start to encounter Hydra and Zola, who is hiding inside the bots and is controlling them. The guests travel through several circuit boards, and circuitry as they twist and turn left and right, they head down one final last tunnel, and they enter their big battle with Zola. Luckily, they're assisted by both Ant-Man and the Wasp, and of course, manage to defeat him. After the victory, Scott excitedly recounts the battle, saying, well, you guys were all like, pew, 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 and Zola was like, whoa, ah! Perfect, Scott. And of course, Stark then comes in to thank the guests for basically making Ant-Man look good. Okay, so next we have the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. It officially opened on May 27th of 2022, and looking for a place to establish a peaceful connection to Earth, and at the suggestion of nostalgic Epcot fan Peter Quill, the planet Xandar and its Nova Corps have decided to establish Epcot's first Otherworld Showcase Pavilion. The Wonders of Xandar Pavilion takes over the old universe of energy space in what is now Epcot's World Discovery Neighborhood. The pavilion welcomes visitors to the Galaxarium, which introduces us to Xandar. For their presentation, they've decided to focus on deep space travel, serving as a way to give guests a look at the formation of the universe. 
And that's something that's going to play a bigger role as things proceed along. Now, from there, we proceed to the Xandar Gallery, where we're treated to some amazing displays that help us learn more about the planet, its cities, its ships, and also its people. Now, from there, we then watch a broadcast of Good Morning Xandar, featuring interviews with our guardian heroes. We get a reminder about Groot's epic sacrifice to save Xandar and learn that Groot is now completely regrown to his former self. We also hear from Star-Lord about his enthusiasm for the Epcot as he shares some of his memories of his youth from the 80s. Humorously, however, most of the things Quill talks about being excited to see have long since been changed to new displays, reminding us just how long he's been away. Now, from the gallery, we get our first surprise. This isn't simply another static World's Fair Epcot-type pavilion. No, Nova Prime appears to explain how the guests are now going to be transported to a Nova Corps star charter, which is orbiting the Earth, for a demonstration of the cosmic generator, as well as offering a hyperjump visit all the way to Xandar. We then meet the legendary Terry Crews, aka Centurion Tau Merrick, a member of the Nova Corps and a commander of the star charter. He explains that we enter the phase chamber and thanks to the Zandarian's cosmic generator, we're going to be on our way. However, this is the moment where it all goes terribly wrong. The celestial Isan the Searcher suddenly appears. Now, you might remember Isan from the first Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. That's when the Collector explained how Isan came into possession of the Power Stone and used its energy to level the surface of an entire planet, vaporizing all life as a result. Now, Isan has decided to steal the Cosmic Generator and announces his plans to turn back time and prevent Earth's very creation. The Guardians explain that the Star Jumper shuttles are the only ships in the area. The Guardians promise the visitors will be safe and ask them to follow Isan and keep track of him until the Guardians can arrive and stop him. Now, Rocket, of course, assumes the plan won't work and makes pessimistic remarks as the shuttle takes off. Now, the shuttle crosses through multiple jump points, and finally the shuttle arrives at Isan's location, where it holds the cosmic generator. Shortly after, the Guardians of the Galaxy arrive in their ship as Isan prepares to throw the cosmic generator towards Terra. The Guardians then blast the cosmic generator from the Celestial's hands, opening another jump point, which proceeds to suck everything in it, taking them all the way back to the time of the Big Bang. Suddenly, the evacuation shuttles are launched backwards in an explosion. As the evacuation shuttles travel through multiple jump points along the way, the Guardians of the Galaxy engage in combat with Isan. The Guardians finally lead a fleet of Nova Corps Star Blasters to Isan, who then manage to contain the Celestial and recover the Cosmic Generator. As the guests return home, Peter Quill welcomes the Terrans to the Guardians of the Galaxy, thanking them for their help. Okay, so next we have the Avengers Quantum Encounter. Now this debuted on July 14th of 2022 as part of the Disney Wish Worlds of Marvel cruise adventure. Ant-Man and the Wasp hosts the Miracles from Molecules show, which is a presentation of the most powerful superhero technologies in the world. Now of course, Scott can't help but start the presentation by talking about why he didn't kill Thanos by flying right up his, well... We never actually hear the rest as Wasp stops him and refocuses Scott. <laughs> Scott then presents a hand-on demonstration of the latest and greatest PIM tech, the Quantum Core. In fact, the guests each have a device on their tables so they can be part of the presentation. However, things start out poorly when Scott ends up shrinking the cruise ship by accident. After having to explain things to the captain, Scott fixes his mistake. However, they are suddenly alerted to a problem by the appearance of Captain America up on the ship's decks. He explains he senses a spike in energy levels at their location. Cap asks Red Wing to scout the area, and Red Wing then spots Ultron approaching with an army of robot sentries eager to take control of the world-changing technology. Now, Ant-Man and the Wasp need all the help they can get to save the day, and fortunately, Cap has brought along a friend, Miss Marvel, who is now an Avenger in training. So, we see Cap and Miss Marvel wipe out several Ultron bots, 
but unfortunately, they just keep coming. So, the Wasp then joins in the fun, teaming up to tackle the Ultron sentries herself. Finally, Captain Marvel appears, and of course, helps save the day. However, after finishing off the Ultron bots, she heads off to address a Kree missile situation, keeping up the running joke of her always leaving unexpectedly, but also cleverly tying in to the next attraction we're going to be discussing. Meanwhile, however, poor Scott is left down below, fighting Ultron all by himself. But with the help of the guests and their devices, Scott turns the core against Ultron and ultimately destroys him. Then, in a surprising turn of events, Ant-Man and Wasp show up in person to visit the guests and to thank them for all their valiant efforts. And just a commentary from me, it was a really cool effect because the voices being played really were Scott Lang and Hope Van Dyne, but obviously it was not them inside the costumes. It was just a clever way to finish off a really cool cruise presentation. All right, on to the final attraction in the amusement park universe. It's Avengers Assemble Flight Force. It debuted on July 20th of 2022, and it took over the rock and roller coaster located in Walt Disney Studios Park in Disneyland Paris. It's located in the new Avengers campus and joins a French version of the Web Slingers of Spider-Man Adventure that we learned about earlier. Okay, so guests will arrive in a room with a large screen showing Iron Man and Captain Marvel talking about an upcoming threat from a Kree missile strike. You might remember Captain Marvel just left behind her battle against the Ultron bots during Avengers Quantum Encounter where she mentioned that Kree missile strike. You might also notice that Iron Man is very much not dead. You see, in the amusement park universe, Thanos didn't do his attack. You might have also remembered that in Cosmic Rewind, the Guardian's adventure, Xandar was very much still around, and Gamora wasn't dead. So the amusement park universe is very different, thanks to Thanos not doing his attack. Well, with the help of Friday, Iron Man and Captain Marvel then cycle through several other Avengers to see who might be able to help, including a humorous listing for Deadpool, which is labeled under the category of Do Not Contact. I completely agree. That's very smart. <laughs> well, anyway, unfortunately, the other Avengers are all very busy with their own adventures, and it looks like Captain Marvel and Iron Man are on their own. Guests are then briefed by Iron Man himself via a very impressive audio animatronic, which is equipped with the brand new Mark 80 armor, exclusively designed for his missions at Avengers Campus. Well, with no time to waste, the guests are told that they will team up with the two Avengers on a high-speed mission. They will embark and fly up through space in a vehicle that Stark has equipped with a homing device to lure the threat away from the planet Earth. The guests then board their vehicles and strap in, and after a countdown, they're launched into space. As they fly at very rapid speeds, which made these screenshots incredibly hard to get, they are treated to the two Avengers as they save the world from the intergalactic threat of the Kree warheads. Finally, they return back safely to Earth, having saved the planet from near destruction. So there you have it. Those are the different rides. However, I am going to leave you with a future ride, with a ride that is just a rendering at this point, coming to Avengers Campus in Disneyland, California, that will be going deeper into the multiverse. At this new attraction, guests will be able to battle alongside all the Avengers from every universe against villains from across the multiverse. The group of villains will also include a new big bad named King Thanos. This is the Thanos that won the Infinity War, and the Avengers are not too happy about that. Check out all of these characters. Remember how I said you never know whether this stuff will end up tying into Secret Wars. This ride looks amazing. So, I leave you with a glaring King Thanos. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Cal, this was for you. I hope you get better, buddy. I really do. I hope things turn around for you. And I hope this gave you a smile in the meantime. So, if you don't mind, anybody who has not uh, subscribed, you can please subscribe. You can like this video. You can check out more content. And in the meantime, continue to enjoy the ever-expanding, ever-growing Marvel Cinematic Universe.